the the water supply yeah. as it relates to health because we had the Bihazia yeah. situation well. and if you want to Yes, well, uh, if we can talk about health, let me take, take you back to the beginning. When I started to practice, as I told you, my major practice was in the Eastern District, Denry. I had to go to Denry every Thursday, because that was the day for court. Sometimes I used to stay, he was not married then, but that doesn't, is, that is not for the reason why I stayed in Miku. I had my farm up there. Every time I pass on the road, you see probably two or three, five persons trekking the road to Denry, from the Mabuya Valley to Denry with plastic flowers and a little box, no bigger than a shoe box, a coffin for a child. So, <laughs> let's start again. Yeah, as I told you, I used to come from Miku or Denry. Denry going up, Denry to court. Miku probably coming down. And invariably, you see this little group. The man will have a little box of white drum in his pocket, and he's carrying on his shoulder a little box. The size of a shoe box. The mother running beside him with a little, some plastic flowers. A child going to be buried. <laughs> Why? Waterborne diseases, dysentery, dire, rampant in the Denry Valley, perhaps elsewhere. But I'm telling you what I used to see. This is my own experience. So I decided, hell, I got to do something about that. And what was worse, in 1966, Morris Mason, who I mentioned earlier, my best friend, representing the Denry Valley, go to Denry Rivier, drink water, and dies from typhoid fever. So what do you do? You have to do something about it. So I decided really, they had the, what they call PHEU here, and the PHEU, I, they said they want to drill wells and, you know, putting a little plaster over a big bobo. I decided that we have to do something. So when you came in, the only places that you used to have portable water was in the middle of castries, we call central castries. And there was a pipe going to Marsha, where everybody used to go, because at one time, some people used to have horses there, and the horses had to drink water. So you, the only castries, and Fort sometimes, and Sufre, Sufre had, all, always had ample supply of water. Now, uh, you had, uh, that's, these are the only places with water, and the, the question of the infant mortality rate in St. Lucia from waterborne diseases was one of the highest in the hemisphere. Probably only less than Haiti. We had typhoid, dysentery, diarrhea, bilhazia, you name it, waterborne diseases. So uh, we decided to do something about it. And again, if you follow me, you look, you see, we are doing it outside of the civil establishment because they are too slow to react. So we created first the 
the Central Water Authority so that water, we could have water throughout. It is now called Wasco or Wasa, whatever they call it now. Well, it be, even in my time it became Wasa because we added sewage, but it was CWA, the Central Water Authority. So that we have the, the, the question of provision of water in the, uh, in, in the towards St. Lucia was centralized on the one authority, the CWA. And we started to expand the water throughout. Now, if you did not expand the water, you couldn't have the development. First, the water is health. You had to expand water. So we expanded water first in every major town, then in every major community. And look if we didn't do that with the banana industry and the fertilizers, and the pesticides, and the nematicides, and the pollution of the rivers. You know what we'd have had? What the disaster we'd have had in our hands? So all of this take careful planning and foresight. We expanded the water. They had, Bilhazia was a major, major killer. We couldn't do it ourselves. In all of these things, I'm telling that we did in St. Lucia. It was, it was done in St. Lucia. But we had a lot of help from other agencies and organizations. People. Again, let me give Hunter France the credit. Hunter went to a, a health conference somewhere, and he met with some people with the Rockefeller Foundation. And he introduced them here. And Rockefeller helped us to put water in the first the areas that were heavily infected, like the Mabuya Valley and the Col de Sac Valley. Put water in those areas so that we can get the people out of the river because generally it was the washing in the river, people getting. Uh, getting attacked by the snails, getting in, into the intestines, and that's the end. So we had the Rockefeller to assist us. Now, as we, it was standpipe in those days. Everybody, not everybody, people, the poor people went to the standpipe for the water. Now, and they used to have what they call the freeness, people going to public baths, etc. That is fine. I mean, that is how we grow. We grew up uh, gradually. So we expanded water. Now, when the United Nations declared 1980 as the decade of the water in 1980, St. Lucia was one of the few developing countries that met the criteria because we, as I said, we expanded water throughout the countryside, eliminated Bilhazia, typhoid fever, you don't hear about it again, dysentery, and St. Lucia now has the infant mortality rate, people, children who die before the, the three years, St. Lucia is one of the lowest in the world, 17 per thousand, as the same as the United States or any other developed country. So there we are. GIS, serving you better. GIS.